Welcome to the KP Podcast, where we talk about the business of real estate. A podcast about leveraging opportunities, growing your business, and experiencing financial freedom. Here are your hosts, Keith Anderson and Peter Cambucos. Welcome, everybody. This is Pete. I'm here with co-host Keith. We're coming to you live from the KP Studios at the Forum. So, Keith, uh, how's things been going this last week, man? I heard we, you had, well, I know you had a pretty good week. Uh, I did. Or I did. Yeah, but it wasn't as good <laughs> as it could have been. I am wearing the shirt oh, right goodness. here commemorating the first ever KP Olympics. And the winning team, the green team. Keith, what team were you on? Uh, not the green team. Not the green team. Not the green I, team, uh, everyone. I took a loss. <laughs> I'm 0 for 1. <laughs> you took an 0 for. So for, for those folks out there, it's a nice, nice event with our, our folks. Got to go outside for the Arizona heat. Fully hits us. And uh, have some fun with everybody. Had a good group out there. Uh, we got to watch Keith attempt to run, <laughs> was which good. was the highlight of the day. But it was good. Uh, it was good. It was good to get out there and uh, have some fun with everybody and, go, and you know, just not work and not talk about real estate stuff. I do not advise anyone to go to zero to 100 on a full sprint <laughs> with no food in your stomach, no water, and a full energy Do drink. It's probably not excuses. a good idea. The excuse is I made a bad decision <laughs> and it cost me my life almost. Wow. I was there. Wow. Hey. Well, I recovered. I'm you're good. alive, and we all enjoyed it. Oh, so. man, I'm sure you did. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that's what it was. Well, everybody, we got an awesome show for you guys this week. Super pumped about it. Uh, something we've been wanting to do for a little while now uh, is uh, everybody likes crazy, crazy hypotheticals. Mm -hmm. They're the funnest things to to really look into and, and research. It's like, what if this happened what are you going to do? Well, right? And it's what people try to figure out, right? Like, what do I need yeah. to be prepared for? What yeah. if this thing happens? Then oh, what? yeah. I mean, we get it all the time. I mean, you always do the, you always hear the crazy ones that people are messing around with. Like, okay, nuclear bomb goes off in your city. What are you going to do? <laughs> right? Like, we're not necessarily talking about those crazy hypotheticals. We want our hypotheticals to be somewhat realistic <laughs> or plausible. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to do a, hey, zombie apocalypse is literally going on. What's your I'm first move? Down. You I'm know, <laughs> we don't we don't want to be focused on those as much. Uh, we want it to be more related to and around the economy, real estate market, etc. Mm -hmm. So we got some. Uh, I got some exciting ones to share, and I'm uh, excited to see Pete your take on uh, what you would uh, you do. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm. I'm ready. Man. Are you so sure? Th throw them out. Hit hit me with them. Let's see what we got. <sighs> I don't, I don't know if you're ready for these. This is going to hit you from left field, and we're going to hope Wait, for the did best. You, did you come up with some of these? Oh, absolutely. Oh, jeez. Most of them. Most of them. So <sighs> I'm excited. Got? First one, this is, this is exciting because it relates exactly to what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is exactly everything we've been talking about. We've been talking about this, the shortage of inventory, correct? Yep. This market Incredible sitting at about 4,000 listings or whatever it is. So I'm going to give you a hypothetical right here, Pete. So uh, you're just a normal day. It's actually raining here in Phoenix, Arizona. Let me set the mood wow. for you. It's raining today. One of the 10 days we get rain. It feels like something's about to happen. Yeah. It just doesn't feel good. You know, the, the mist is in the air. Do we get the news reporters that go out and find a puddle? Yes. Stand next to it to show us that it's raining. Yeah, but they got to do favorite. their clip before it evaporates. <laughs> That's what's key. <laughs> so it's raining. It's cloudy. It feels a little depressing uh -huh, out there. Uh -huh. And uh, you pull up your laptop. You're on the patio. It's still fairly warm because it's Arizona. So it's 75 degrees, but cloudy and raining at the same time. You pull yeah. up your, your laptop. You go to the MLS. You pull up the inventory. And you're at 8,500 listings. The inventory Ooh. literally just doubled <laughs> within the last two weeks to a month, right? You're just <laughs> last, this last month, right now, it's 4,000 or under. Uh -huh. You pull up that laptop and that active MLS <laughs> shows 8,500 or more. And we doubled it. Doubled it. When was, the last, time, when was the last time I looked at it? Two and a half weeks ago. It All is right. okay. skyrocketed, doubled in two and a half weeks. So what do you do? The first thing that I'm going to do is head back into my liquor cabinet, pull <laughs> out a little shot glass, get a little 
a little whiskey shot, maybe a little whistle pig or something. Some warm juice, huh? <laughs> some dad, some dad juice. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna take a quick little shot just to calm the nerves there, real okay. quick, because you're telling me this thing's doubled in like two and a half weeks. So I'm gonna go back out there, make sure I looked at it right. So you're gonna recheck, refresh. I'm gonna recheck. I'm gonna refresh okay. this. Number still good. Sad no. news is it's now nine thousand. Oh man! You just refreshed it. That was a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right. So. So next thing I'm doing then, I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do if I see that is I start thinking, okay, what investment properties do I have that maybe were, you know, not my best ones or at the edge that I was thinking about what to do with or thinking, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to hang on to these. These aren't my core. These are some of the ones, you know, that, that were uh, a little more towards the edge for me. And I'm probably going to look to list those. I'm probably going to sell them right away. You mean away. sell them? Because mm-hmm. we better get them up and out. Yeah, I better get them up like that afternoon. So like you're going to the MLS and starting yeah. doing data now, entry right now. now. Now, to be clear, I'm not doing anything with my primary house. And, okay. and to be honest with you, I'm probably holding all my core investment properties because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking to unload everything. But I got to tell you, the ones that were questionable, the ones that were, hey, this wasn't going to be a long-term hold for me right now, Maybe breaking um, even type properties? Yeah, or just for whatever reason, it wasn't something that I was loving. I might be I might be adding to that nine thousand number before it starts heading up towards twenty or thirty thousand. So you're uh you're considering it, hey, the market's not death zone yet. We're right. not there we yet. We still we're still gonna have it, you know, even at nine thousand, we still got incredibly low inventory. But what's one of the things that we talk about when we look at these reports? We talk about the rate of change. Yeah, and if all of a sudden changed. we're seeing this thing just not going down. skyrocket, that's a that's a Where's big that trend rate of change. Right? If it's in two and a half weeks, you just added mm-hmm. 5,000 listings. Yeah. What's so, two and a half more weeks do? Right. And so to be clear, you know, if my time horizon is like, hey, I've got these core ones. I'm going to hold these for the next 30, 40 years. I'm making awesome cash flow. They're in great areas. I love them. I'm not selling. You don't have to. I don't have to sell. That's not your strategy. Right. Because look at what this is going to do is you're going to now have, you know, potentially some some more renters because, you know, if if the inventory is going up, I'm assuming our market, there's other things probably happening in there. And, uh, you know, that market might slow. And maybe I've got some people that aren't going to buy now. Maybe they're looking to rent. So those will be fine. They'll be fine. But if there was stuff that I wasn't sure about, this would be the time to hurry up and get it while the getting still good. So if we have some flippers listening today, (laughs) some investors that do fix and flips, what would be your immediate advice to them if they saw this? Yeah, if you if you're if they're doing the fix and flow, man, like I said, ready to change. If we're seeing uh, that going, then you're assuming hurry. that other stuff's going. Is hurry up, hurry up, and get uh, them up sell there them as because is, you're about maybe, to get potentially some, get them up and get out. Some slowdowns, yep. Yeah, for okay. Sure. And so, this is why we keep our eye on this stuff every time, right? Every week. So I mean, I I like that. I think that's a it's a good analysis of what you should do. Um, Long term investments that you love, you know, keep, but you have to understand. But if that market keeps heading in that direction, you may see that price decrease. Most likely, probably see a price decrease of some sort mm-hmm. or stabilization of at least. And uh, you better be okay with uh, holding them through it. Yeah, at least leveling out, right? Which yep. is why it's important that, you know, if it was investment properties, you're buying them right. Now, if it's your primary residence, you know, um, as long as you can afford the payment, you like where you live. Hey, man, keep going yeah. out there, right? It doesn't matter whether it's going going up and down, but those investments, that's why it's so important to buy them right, make sure those things are cash flowing. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So I got another one here. This is a more, this might be more towards consumer, consumer focused, if you will. Okay. Um, and I know people out there might be dealing with it. It hasn't been as known as of late because of price indexes and, and where things have been. Mm-hmm. However... This is something you may see. So, Pete, let me give you another uh, another situation here. Uh, you got a uh, little bachelor pad. Okay, we'll go back to your uh, <laughs> we'll go back to your single days here. I had a sweet okay? bachelor pad. Bachelor pad. You don't even okay, know. just awesome. you, <laughs> no roommates, hanging out type thing, and you're uh, you're in a three bedroom, two bath type house, and you're renting. Mm-hmm. Okay, way back in college, Pete days, a long time ago, like sixty years ago, easy. All right, easy long day, time right. ago. Anyways, you're in your, your Last bachelor century, party. Is yeah, that what you're saying? 1800s. Okay. <laughs> so, three bedroom, two bath, single story house, and uh, you have a, a killer deal renting. Mm-hmm. And you, it's always been your goal to buy. You know, you're young 
and you wanted to buy and start investing and grow your your net worth, but you've been renting. Yeah. Um, you might have enough capital to buy right now. Okay. You're ready. You have a down payment. You have things going, but you're starting to look at the market and your rent on this three, two is 1200 bucks a month. Let's just say it doesn't wow. matter what city. It's a sweet deal right now. Sweet deal right now. Right. 1200 bucks, three bedroom, two bath, decent size house. Now you look at the market, that exact same house. If you wanted to buy, you got pre-qualified, you're excited, you're pumped, your mortgage, you know, with all the other taxes and other things combined, you know, uh, insurance, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's sitting $1,500. So my mortgage is going to be more than my rent payment. Yes. Hmm. Your rent would be cheaper per month mm-hmm. than your mortgage. Yeah. Now, granted, all the benefits of buying a house and the benefits sometimes of renting, there's both sides of the, the fence there. Yep. But you've been wanting to buy this house mm-hmm. and start your life and start that journey of home ownership. What do you do? So- so obviously that's not today's market. Now we we've yeah, seen unless, this. and if it is, that's <laughs> very rare. We, we've seen this stuff, you know, obviously in the past. We'll probably see it again, but not today's market. Yeah. So so but okay, let's say we're in here today and, and I'm renting. I got this sweet deal locked in on my rent. And uh and I'm looking at that thing and the mortgage is gonna be more. Well, I I think the first thing that I'm looking at is you know, outside of just the numbers, what are my plans? You know, and that's that's uh, something that everybody's got to consider. What am I planning on doing? Am I mm-hmm. am I staying? You know, in Phoenix. Let's say I'm in Phoenix. Am I staying in Phoenix for you know the next four or five years, six years, whatever it is? Are those my plans, or am I moving in the next year or two? So, and the reason I say that is because even if the rent is a little bit lower right now. Number one, that's not guaranteed. That's not guaranteed that I'm going to be able to keep that for the next year or two years. You might wake up one morning on the wrong side (laughs) of the bed. (laughs) I got no control over that, right? Year to year, it could be whatever. And so obviously I've already got something real low, but the fact is, you know, something we've talked about before is interest rates are so low right now. And so if I can lock in a 30-year fixed at a super low interest rate, even if in the short term, that means that I'm going to pay a little bit more in rent. I'm doing that. I'm doing that if I'm going to plan on being here for the next four or five years because now I've locked in this very low interest rate, historically low interest rates. And, you know, I've got, you know, I'm paying down this mortgage. I'm potentially getting the appreciation and stuff like that. And now that's mine. And I've locked in um, mortgage rates that, you know, like we always say, we never have a crystal ball, but they're probably not going to be this low, you know, in the coming years. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, look, if I'm looking to move in the next year or two, yeah, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense. So, you know, stick it out another year and then take off. But yeah, if, I, if I'm going to be in for the long term, man, see, it's, I got to get a look at the long term picture, right? I would probably argue that point a little bit, How's that? a little bit there at the end, because you said, hey, if you're looking to leave, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't do it. Like it right. might not be the best. So let's say you are going to leave in the next two years. Let's okay. say, you know, you're like, hey. I'm going out to Idaho. So if you've, Nate, if you're out there listening to this podcast, this might be you right here. I'm plant potatoes. Okay. I'm you're going out something. to uh, Idaho, and uh, oh, I know what I'm doing up there. I'm going up there for the timber, aren't I? Oh, I'm th- going it, it for might be that the wood. sweet gold <laughs> that's in those woods right now. Oh, the old, the old <laughs> northern timberland. So uh, no, let's say you're leaving two years. Within the next two years, you're absolutely gone. Your plan is to be there. Yeah, you're still renting. You got a sweet deal, and mm-hmm. in my mind. I'm still buying that house at a short or at, at that interest rate for one reason. There's nothing saying I can't flip that to a rental property, start my journey when I'm up there again and That's have an point. investment down here a at point. a very low interest rate. Mm-hmm. Because in my strategy, I'm saying, Hey, that's a, either a long, t- if I don't live there, someone else is going to have to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And, uh, you know, I would rent it out worst case, long term. Best case, short term rental. Arizona is a great market for that. Yeah, I mean, food for thought, you know, because that, yeah. that's that's a good point. Yeah, if, if you're if you're okay being a, a long distance uh, landlord, property you know, with manager, a, yeah, property management in in place and stuff like that. But for sure, it's something to think about. It's a, it's definitely a good option. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. think either way. Uh, uh, we, we literally have people running across our set doing jumping jacks <laughs> and uh, having a good old time. Waving so. to us. If you guys are down here in the channel, you got to go come visit. Over come check the out the forum. This is good uh, time. Definitely an awesome place to be. All right, Pete. Number so, so well, well, well hang, hang on there, bud. I, I think, you know, you've asked me a couple. <laughs> <See> your turn. <laughs> it's, let me, let me get, I got one for All you right, right now. Right. Okay. Okay. I got one for you. So 
you know, we're, we're listening to, to what's going on right now. Okay. What would you do hypothetically? Okay. If the good old U.S. government and the Federal Reserve makes good on their promises, okay, that they're going to be there's a raising. lot of promises. <laughs> there's a lot of promises. Okay, which promise are we referring to here? <laughs> of of rate of going with inflation, raising inflation. That they are going to create inflation. Wow. So Fed said, you know what? We're trying to create inflation. They're telling us they're trying to do it. They want that rate over 2%. I say we're already there, but they're going to keep pushing this thing. And all of a sudden now, they did it. They've got inflation. They succeeded. And they succeeded. Uh, okay. Well, they can succeed at limited things. So we're giving them this one. Okay. <laughs> they, don't, they don't do a lot of stuff right. But so, let's say they got this one. Right. You know, the blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. And the government did it, man. They got this. They got the inflation that they're trying to get. And now you see the value of your dollar going down or however you want to look at it. You see that inflation skyrocketing. What are you, what are you doing? Okay. Well, <laughs> I would hope that people took proper precautions given that this is a very realistic situation. That's the sad <laughs> part about it. This is not as much you of a hypothetical. Is, you think this is one they could do? This might be a prophetical statement right here, Pete. <laughs> this might be a prophesized statement of the next couple of years. So what I would do is I would, again, take a nice big breath, take a deep breath and say, okay, we're here. It happened. And I would absolutely make sure I have as many hard assets as I possibly can. Mm. Complete opposite of what we talked about earlier of the uh, supply difference. I would keep every type of property, hard asset, gold that I possibly have. Okay. I'd probably go find a hole, dig it, <laughs> and put my gold there and hide it from everyone <laughs> because the chances of me getting robbed just went up at about another <laughs> 10 notches. So if I have a safe in the house, I'm burying it somewhere in my backyard. <laughs> so you're building a bunker. I'm going to build a bunker. Okay. I'm going to get in my vehicle slowly. I'm going to quickly head to Costco. That? Are you selling that vehicle? No, that's fast. I need to get out of town quick if I need <laughs> right. to. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not selling anything. <laughs> I'm keeping every asset I possibly have because mm -hmm. with inflation and with what, what's going on there, Debt's easier to pay off over time with mm -hmm. the inflation. The debt means basically nothing at that point. My my mortgage just became way easier to say, hey, I'm debt free if I, my job continues steady. Yep. So uh, I might have to pay three hundred dollars for a loaf of bread, but you know what? <laughs> it's it's a small price. It's a small price to pay. Price to pay. That means my mortgage is going to be a week's pay. Yep. You know, if I'm yep. heading that route. So I'm heading to Costco. I'm going to be one of those TP warriors. I'm going to get as much of that as I can. And be another one of them hoarders. Huh? Oh, I will hoard the crap out of everything. If that dollar moves and that needle moves, we you got to start taking different precautions. Your outlook on what we're doing is is a lot different. It might not be crazy out there. It might not be as apocalyptic as we're talking about. However, it's going to crunch a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And having hard assets will be the number one thing. I am sure as heck getting a billion miles away from the stock market and everything that is not tangibly held in my hand or on my property. Like that's, that's something important so, I'm going to do. So yeah, real estate wise. Right. So like you said, you're, you're Great. hanging on to those. Every single one of those. Yep. My debt's going to plummet basically with market. Like I can slowly start to pay those things off and it's yeah. going to happen way quicker than I would on a 30 year. Yeah. So just to make sure everybody's on the same page here. So what you're saying is your, your mortgage, you're going to be paying with cheaper Oof. dollars, you oh, know, yeah. because if the, if inflation's coming up, then everything is going to cost more, which means, yeah. you know, your mortgage isn't, isn't changing. That That's why change. we talk about that 30 year fix lock in this low rate. Cause if that inflation goes up, those, those are that, that payment staying the same when everything else yeah. is going up cheaper dollars. It, and it gives you, I mean, just to put things in perspective for someone that, that would be the same as someone who got a mortgage, you know, 25 years ago. Oh yeah. And never refi. They still got the same mortgage. Well, their payment might be you know, 400 bucks or something like yeah. that because oh. everything's increased I, over the last 25 years. I still remember this when I, when my parents bought their first primary house, when I was a kid, they, they only spent like, I think it was like 140,000 mm -hmm. for this house at that time. Their interest rate was still like eight, 9% it was way higher. Mm -hmm. Right. But I still remember their payment being like 850 bucks. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at it today, 
there's no way you would find anything because that same equivalent house is 350, 400, right. and your payment's 1600, 1800, somewhere mm-hmm. in there. It's the same thing. It'd be like if you had that loan and it's a $900 loan a month, that's nothing to pay each yeah. month. You know, yeah. same type so, of house. So, yeah, and that's just like you said, you get that inflation, all those real out the houses. Um, anything tangible, like I said, the cars. That's why I was asking about that. I mean, whatever mm-hmm. it is, yep. the prices essentially in just you know dollar terms, if you will, are all going to increase because yep. the value. It's just going to take more dollars to buy the same stuff. Ex- exactly. So you want to hold real stuff, houses and 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 property, gold being the primary yep. thing. You know. So yep. yeah, you, and then that kit and scenario, you hope you already got a bunch of properties or at least one. Yeah. And hang on to that that sucker because that price probably going up right there. Absolutely. That's where that's good. That's I good, agree. Man. Uh, so I got more of a fun one. So those investors out there that are always like, man, what do I, uh, if I just had so much money, what would I, I would have so many different good strategies Mm -hmm. to invest and do. Oh, if I just had the capital to be able to do it, that's, that's a common thought all the time, right? If you just have the capital to be able to move and, and push. Most of the time, what happens is you finally get the capital. You don't know what you're doing with it. (laughs) If you really ask somebody, it's like, okay, I got it now. I forgot what I was going to do, <laughs> but in this situation, okay, Pete, you're just, you're taking a nice little stroll and you come across old man Riggins. Okay. Old man Riggins. Old man Riggins okay. He's a, he's the, uh, community nut, if you will. <laughs> and, uh, he's, at, he's near the end. You could just tell, but no one's been nice to him and you just give him just a couple minutes of your day. Mm-hmm. No one knows that old man Riggins is richer than the Hills. Okay. And he's like, you know what, Pete? I like you. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Straight cash. Super nice guy. <laughs> just super nice guy. Just he gives it to me. Just huh? black briefcase and all. It it may be stolen. <laughs> I don't. You know, I don't know. ask any questions. No it's questions. Cash, right? You're you know what, Pete? Nice guy. Thank you. <laughs> and be on your way. <laughs> the guy's gonna die this week. Like it's oh. guaranteed. He's old, old man Riggins, and he gives you a hundred k cash. It's mm-hmm. in your possession. Yeah. You put it in the bank, it says for 30 days, so it could be sourced. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you have a hundred grand. Yeah. What are you doing with that hundred thousand dollars? In today's climate market. Oh, that's easy. Hundred grand. That's easy. Straight man. cash. What are you doing? I'm 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 throwing it all on Dogecoin or what is the whatever that Dogecoin. Me- <laughs> whatever that meme coin is. You're, right? you're telling me you're not gonna go to Vegas and put that on black. Put it all on black. You're right? not gonna put that on black right now. Because that's pretty much no, what you're telling me you're doing pretty, with that's Dogecoin. That's pretty much what it is, right? No, so in all seriousness, we won't put it on Dogecoin. Okay. But going back to what we we're talking about right now with this super low interest rates right now, I'm buying out I'm buying another property. Okay. I'm gonna take that out there. I'm gonna buy property. I'm gonna lock in the low interest rate right now while I can and get out there and buy some more real assets in an environment where, you know, I mean we've talked about it. In the last show, I got the demographics working for me. I yep. got super low interest rates. I'm going to go out there and buy another house. I mean, this is yeah. an interesting one, though. How about you? What, what would you do on this one? Yeah, It's good. And, and I like this. And I like to mirror people that have way more money than I do mm-hmm. and do what they do, right? So you would do Dogecoin? No, I would not. That <laughs> terrifies me. No, I would uh, look at these big conglomerates, these big corporations. They're buying inventory and houses like crazy. Yeah. They're doing it for a reason. They understand the market way better than I do. They have a lot better conversations with people a lot higher up. And if they're flooding all this income into the market and purchasing these long-term holds and these investment properties, I'm doing the same thing. I have a, I'm trying to work a niche into the Airbnb market and continue to grow my doors that direction. Uh, for 100K, I, can, I might even have a chance to buy two of them. But for the most part, I'd be looking to get one good Airbnb, fully furnished, ready to go. Um, you know, with normal standpoints in, in this market rent, you don't really need any extra income to buy one. You just need the capital to do so. Mm. It all maps out. So as long as you have the capital for a down payment, furnish the place, I'm going to get another door so right you, away. So you, and just to bring everybody up to speed, when you're saying Airbnb, you're just talking about short-term rentals Short-term in rentals. Yep. One month, Rent them out maybe for, three months or less. Yeah. And primary focus is I want a no HOA, short-term rental. And I, the return's better right now. This market's hot for an Absolutely, Airbnb market. Yeah. It's crazy right now. I know when we travel, we're looking at those sh- those Airbnb, VRBO yeah. stuff all the time. Ho- and yeah, those are, I mean, that's where that's where people are Hotels at Hotels right can't keep up right now, especially coming out of COVID like this. Like it's, yeah. you can't, they're all, it half of them are shut it. down or restricted and the prices are going up. Mm-hmm. Airbnbs haven't changed. They're steadfast right now and they're making a killing. 
No, that's a good point. So you go short term rentals. Short term right away. I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good that's a good one right now. It's a definitely a good option right now for sure. All right. I got one last one for you, Pete. All right, hit me. Uh this might be our most realistic one yet. <laughs> this okay. is, it might be the most far fetched and yet the most realistic at the same point. I don't even know okay. how we can do it. All right. This is already stemming from news that we're seeing in the market as we speak. We've already seen a few articles about it. We've already seen a couple rumors coming around thinking this is going to happen sooner than we'd like. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, there's positives for people, but there's also a lot of negatives that roll with it. Okay. It opens up a lot of doors that we haven't seen or we haven't seen in a long time or we haven't seen the same way. So, Pete, the, uh, the government rolls out a new program with a, uh, some loan programs that are coming out to help first time home buyers. Oh, I think right. I know where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've seen them in the past. You know, DPA programs, for those of you guys who don't know, down payment assistance programs. A lot of people call them first-time homebuyer programs, okay? But uh, we're more looking at it in a new light. We're not just talking down payment. We're talking full-on grant money for anything real estate-related, closing costs, down payment, going over appraised value, <laughs> just a straight cash donation, to the bank for a first time home buyer. Okay. Of fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. Pete, you're in the market. Fifteen grand. Here you go. You can finally get out of your bachelor pad. Now it does make the the conversation earlier about the twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollar monthly rent <laughs> look a lot better. Yeah. But oh. you're getting you're getting fifteen grand as a first time home buyer. And I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna sweeten the pot even more. Okay. Something else they've talked about is a forty year loan term. <laughs> Forty-year mortgage. Now keep this in mind: thirty years normal. Adding another ten years to oh, yeah. your loan with the interest compounding is literally going to significantly drop your your monthly payment. Mm-hmm. It's gonna Massively, spread it, out, right? yep. spread it out another ten years. You're going to pay a whole heck of a lot more money for yeah. your house over the ten years, but your payments lower. It's more affordable. You can you can qualify. So what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> so this is where I do my best Usain Bolt impression and I move as fast as I possibly can. To Canada? As fast as I possibly <laughs> can to buy. If I don't already own a bunch okay. of properties, I'm buying like today. And, and here's okay. why I say I'm, I'm moving fast because what's going to happen here in this scenario is if this happens – you're going to have a very small window to take advantage of it before the market adjusts to that, Effects. right? Yeah. Yep. So if you've got 40 year mortgages, all of a sudden people can spread those out and that, and they can afford more house. So that's going to drive the demand up and drive the prices up. Same with that 15,000. If I've got 15,000 that we're getting all of a sudden that demand's going up and that affordability and what they can afford is, um, you know, the price points they can get to are going to go up. So the market is going to adjust, I'd say pretty quickly and push those prices up at, well, I'd say right off the bat, $15,000. So, and then with the 40 year <laughs> mortgage, even more so. So you're telling me right now that you're not going to be the only one taking advantage I'm of this I'm not going to be the only one. <laughs> And basically, you're going to have to go as fast as you possibly can to try to catch a little bit of this as the market adjusts, because I tell you, the market's going to adjust quick. And what I mean adjust is you're going to yeah. see those prices go up, and, and you're going to see them go up quick. And it sounds bad, but I mean, if there's rumor of that out there, it may be beneficial to take advantage before it happens, yeah. because you might not be able to catch it as fast as you want to. If it looks like that might start coming to fruition... Man, I mean, that's going to Get your make investment a, properties now. You Buy them up early. I was going to say, you think it's crazy now. I don't even know. You think... I don't Do you think that they're thinking this stuff through? I, I don't. They? I really don't. I think... You know what they're thinking? I think that it's a kid who's never messed around with Mentos and Coke and says, hey... <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. If this I throw seems this like a good here. idea. Because uh, it is going to explode like no joke like literally the best analogy I could probably he's do. like listen i know we got a tight market and it's hard for first home home buyers let's make it harder <laughs> here let's throw some gasoline on that fire and that'll help that out right there that'll it, help it it is funny because sometimes <laughs> people don't understand the market in its entirety of what those buying conditions are it looks from the outside looking in let's help first time home buyers buy a house what it does is it just makes the competition even worse. But Keith, in fairness to them, those two things would absolutely help first-time homebuyers for about two weeks. 
until, You're giving them two weeks? Until that market just ah. explodes. And uh, not to mention the impact that a $15,000 grant program would do yeah. on top of that. Yeah. I mean, we've never seen that. Yeah. Not above appraised I mean, value type. You're telling them like, hey, we're going to give you fifteen grand, to be able to go above appraised value to win these deals. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Like... That's why I said, yeah, first thing you're going to see is the every house goes go up 15, 15 grand. <laughs> <laughs> Change your listings that day, guys. <laughs> you so, might get 30 out of it. So hopefully, hopefully some people over there are, uh, you know, got, you know, maybe they're thinking yeah. this thing through. I don't know. We'll, we'll, I, we can only hope. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you guys had fun today. These are uh, a few of the hypothetical questions we got. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. it. In all seriousness, it's to focus what those conditions are going to look like. Start learning that market a little bit. If you haven't thought around what could happen in this situation or that situation, prepare your business. One of the big things that we talk about for the business of real estate is we're always thinking about what ifs in certain situations, because if you're not prepared, you have to have that extra strategy. You have to have that plan. You know, every single company, every single school, every single, uh, you know, business, they have that emergency plan. If you don't have that emergency plan or that shift plan, you're going to fail when it happens. So be prepared in all different situations and all different scenarios. Uh, And some of these questions hopefully got you thinking like, okay, if this happens, I got to be ready for certain things. I got to be on my, my a game and and get it ready. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that's what we do in our business. We're always trying to look not only, you know, Hey, what's coming in the next six months, but what are we looking at in in the next year? you know, two years, three years, whatever it is. Uh, And that's just, you know, not only market wise for, you know, clients and ourselves and consumers, but also the business, you know, what's happening in the real estate industry and where's that going? And, you know, you never want to see, you know, we know what's happening today, but the way that you're going to be successful and stay in front of this thing is where's this thing going? You know, it's like they say in in hockey, right? You don't, you don't skate to where the puck is. You skate to where the puck's going. Yeah. A hundred percent. So awesome guys. I appreciate you guys all joining on with us today. Uh, Make sure you guys subscribe on our podcast. We love all the followers. Appreciate all the growth we've been able to have. Uh, And check us out on YouTube at the KP elite and Instagram as well. We got a lot of good training videos coming your way as well. Uh, Market updates and other things to help encourage your guys' business. So Appreciate it. And again, if you guys have questions, reach out to uh, questions at kpeliteaz.com and we'd love to answer those for you guys. So awesome. We will uh, see you next time. See you guys.